Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. Hello, today I thought we'd do something a bit different. I'm going to show you how to turn this old uh, laptop into a nice screen that looks like this. I have one exactly like that that I'm using in my workshop as a video monitor. So it's really very easy to tear apart an old laptop and take the screen from it. The nice thing about these Dells my wife and I both had the same Dell. Mine died after four years from overheating and hers died after five. So for the last year or so, or the last few months, I've had this nice 15.6 inch full HD screen in my workshop, which I'm currently using right now. It's right there and I can see what's happening on the camera. I'm using it as a video monitor, but you could use it with your Raspberry Pi, you could use it with anything. It's really very, very useful and not hard at all. So how do you go about it? Firstly, you have to take the LCD out of the laptop. And secondly, you need a driver board. It's really not very hard to do at all. What you do is you take the LCD out of the laptop, you look on the back and find the part number. Once you've got the part number, you Google whatever the part number is, driver board, and you will find on eBay or AliExpress or somewhere, someone will be selling a driver board for that particular model of LCD. And it's very important that you get one that fits your exact LCD because the firmware on the driver board is different for all of them. They've all got different numbers of pixels and different mechanisms for working. So different protocols. So let's get on with the teardown and putting it together. So the first thing you do is you open up your Dell laptop and it's time to get a bit brutal with it. This is going to look this is going to look bad, but this is all you do. You stick your nails under there and you rip off the front part. And you don't have to care too much about it because you're never going to use it again unless you decide to keep the bevel. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pull that off. And you could, you could use the bezel if you wanted to, but I don't. So I just toss that over there. And right in the corners, you'll see there are one, two, three, four mounting screws. So we'll take a little screwdriver. Perhaps I'll zoom in a little bit. Let's see if I can show you that. Right, so we'll undo that one. And now that one. Okay, and there's a couple down here which are a little bit awkward to get to, but should be okay. One there, it's fallen in, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. And one down here, which I realize you can't see that actually spinning, but never mind. So that's with all the four screws out. There's a camera connector there that needs to be popped off. See if I can do that with a skewer. Yep, that's popped off. And the one thing we don't want to damage is the LCD connector here. We won't be using this again. You really do want to make sure that you preserve that socket because you'll need it to connect your driver board to. Right, we don't need that camera connector anymore, so we'll peel that off. So what I did was I pulled up on that tab that was holding it in place. There's a little clip there. Then we should be able, hopefully, to undo that connection. Right, the screen is now separated from the laptop and we will gently peel that off. Okay, so we got that out and now to gently detach this from the back of the LCD without any damage. Okay, I think the LCD is free now. We should be able to lift it and take it away from the laptop and chuck away the rest. Hurrah! So let's have a look at the back. You can see this label here tells you that you have an LP156WF1. Okay, so the 156 probably means it's 15.6 inch 
and it's full HD, look, and made by LG. No wonder we enjoyed using them so much. They really were lovely screens. 15.6 inch full HD, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Far too good to throw away. Let's find a driver board for it. Okay, so I googled LP156WF1 driver board and I came up with a couple of eBay links and one from AliExpress. The AliExpress one was the one I chose because it was $30 delivered as far as I remember and I thought I'll take a punt. If it doesn't work it's only $30 down the toilet. You can see here in the background this is one of the items I bought. So let's have a look at that now. So here's what you get for your 30 bucks. You get a driver board which has headphone and speaker sockets, VGA, uh, DVI-D and HDMI and there's a 12 volt barrel jack there. You also have a little button board with six buttons on that will help you navigate the menus for the on-screen display and the other mess of wires that you have is connected to this connector which is how you will connect the driver board to the LCD. They will have fitted the right connector for you. It's a little bit of a mess on the driver board itself and it's really good that they've already fitted that connector because it would have been easy to put that on the wrong way around. Okay, so let's connect it up and see if it works. It should go this way around, I think. Side seems to have gone in. Yeah, that went in okay. Fantastic. So we've got it attached. It'll be time to power it up in a minute and see if it works. But before we do that, just be aware that there are electrical contacts on the back of the board and some of the LCD is metal, so you've got a metal chassis holding it there, which I've left on because it's useful. But you've also got a metal case on the LCD as well, so if you're going to put the driver board on the back of the LCD, it's probably a good idea to put something non-conducting in between the driver board and the LCD. For the moment we're just going to use it on the bench. So let's flip that over. Well, this is Raspi TV after all, so it seems like it would be rude to try it with anything other than a Raspberry Pi. So let's connect up an HDMI lead. Ow. We'll connect the other end to a Raspberry Pi. All we're missing now is some power for the driver board. So let's power that up and see what happens. Oh, we've got an LED on the keyboard and we've got a sing symbols, Chinese symbols on the screen. Okay, this is hopeful. Right, let's power up the Pi. Plug in Pi power. Is the screen going to work? Ooh, I'm going to have to tilt that so you can see it. But yes, it is. We have raspberries. And now we have a GUI. Look at that, it's working. Fantastic. Right, I will have to put it on a little stand, I think. Look at that, it's working perfectly. That's not bad for 30 bucks, is it? I will probably need to tweak a few settings, but other than that, I'm delighted. So I remember when I got the first one, there was a hurdle I had to jump through. When you press the menu button, which is this one here, look what happens. You get a load of Chinese stuff on the screen which is actually quite difficult to understand. So what I had to do was I had to Google the word for language in Chinese and find the right pictogram and then trawl through the menus looking for that and so that would enable me to change the language. So if my notes are correct I should have to press this sequence here to get the language changed. So it should be menu, right, menu, 
menu, yay! Then you just navigate to the language you want, which in this case is English, and press menu again, and then the, yeah, then it's already there, it's changed. So next time we go to the menu, it's in English, hurrah! And that, my friends, is pretty much all there is to it. After that, you can play around with the menus, you can set it up so that it works the way you want to, and everything is sorted. So you've just got yourself a full HD LCD for your Raspberry Pi, for your video camera, for your DSLR, for the princely sum of $30. That's all there is to it. It's easy. You just have to have a punt. So now I've got two of them, look. One there is a video monitor, and one there for the Raspberry Pi. After rebooting with the Pi already connected, it went full screen, and now we've got all of that 15.6 inches of real estate to play with. Awesome! Well that was easy, wasn't it? It took about 10 minutes, and it worked straight out of the box. The hardest part is taking the risk of importing the driver board from somewhere, from people you don't know. But as I said, mine cost me $30, it works straight away out of the box, and I've ended up with a full high definition 15.6 inch screen that I can use for my Raspberry Pi, for a workshop monitor, for anything. Gorgeous. Everybody knows someone who's throwing away a laptop. Why chuck away a perfectly good screen? Take the LCD out, Google it, see if you can find a driver board. You might end up with a really great value monitor. Give it a shot. We're hackers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.